Uh, hi, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Lawrence, and uh, I'm actually a teacher at the University of Applied Sciences in uh, Amsterdam. Uh, but that's not what I'm here to talk to you about today. Uh, I'm also a volunteer at uh, a refugee code school called Hack Your Future. Um, and, uh, well, I can tell you what Hack Your Future is, but it's actually been done better uh, in this video. So I'll show you, show you a short clip. Hacky Future is uh, an initiative. It's an organization that, especially for refugees, that come to the Netherlands. Uh, I think it's mostly Syria, but it's from other places as well. People who have left their countries involuntarily to pick up a new skill, hopefully. So Hack Your Future teaches them computer programming, web development, CSS and HTML, and you learn the basic about it, and then JavaScript, of course and help them to find jobs. These are people who had some unfortunate circumstances perhaps and are trying to do something good for themselves and for the world. I'm proud of myself that I could learn it all the way. So this actually tells you a bit about what Hack Your Future is, but not so much about why Hack Your Future is. So Hack Your Future was founded by a couple of people who uh, thought, well, there's a, a growing group of uh, refugees coming to our country, um, and they'll actually have a lot of trouble entering the job market because they won't have the right background, they'll have some language barriers, uh, maybe there's some discrimination issues going on. So how can we prevent these people from becoming marginalized in our society? So they funded Hack Your Future, um, because they decided, well, what's, what's the best way to actually empower people and the best way to get them jobs? Well, one of the best ways currently is to teach them web development skills, because there's a lot of demand for web development skills, um, and it allows you to go into various different paths, as, as you all know. Um, so we thought, well, how can we do that? Um, we came up with an idea of, uh, of setting up a volunteer program where volunteers teach refugees uh, every Sunday for about four hours, we have uh, interactive sessions with them. Um, and then they spend about 20 hours working on homework assignments and they hand in their homework on GitHub and we interact with them through Slack throughout the week. So they actually have some support for the whole week. Um, we teach them basic skills. Uh, first, we start off with HTML, CSS because they have virtually no technical skills coming in and that's like a really easy way to enter uh, this field. And then we spent nine weeks on the, the basics of programming through JavaScript, um, which I had uh, a lot of pleasure in teaching them. Uh, they're super motivated, so it goes a lot faster, actually, than with my students at the university. Um, <laughs> and after, uh, at the end of those six months, they work on a project and they actually develop something themselves. They often choose to develop something that will benefit other refugees, which is really awesome. Um, and uh, alongside that program, we also teach some seminars on how to conduct yourself in job interviews, how to uh, make a good LinkedIn profile, uh, well, you know, basic skills that you might also want uh, and things that are quite different in, in the Netherlands uh, as opposed to, for instance, Syria. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the way that we, uh, that we set it up. Um, so what have we achieved? Uh, well, we have about 55 students uh, that have found jobs at companies such as KPMG, uh, Booking.com, and KLM. Um, I guess that's the, the main thing that we've achieved. Uh, but we also have an, uh, an active network of students, mentors, and alumni. There are 200 people strong. They're all in one Slack group. They help each other out with anything from um, uh, finding uh, good companies to uh, apply at, to how to cycle through the snow in the Netherlands when winter comes. Um, and we've also achieved 100% uptime for the past two years. And honestly, who can really say that about uh, any program they're running? <laughs> uh, we also have some new chapters in Copenhagen, London, uh, and Malmo. Uh, so people have uh, started uh, copying our project. Uh, and hopefully we've achieved part of, at least, uh, a better future. 
So uh, I also have a, a quote, it's not by Steve Jobs, it's by, uh, by Jack, one of our students. Um, he says that his, his main takeaways from the program uh, were to how to think like a programmer, how to work in a team, and most importantly, um, that people can still treat him for the, for the person that he, are, he, that he is and not uh, the way that he might be seen, um, which I think is a very important thing for these students coming to us because as soon as they enter our doors, they, they stop being a refugee and they start being a student. And we just treat them like that and we don't really talk about their backgrounds at all. We just treat them as students and we say, this is your homework, uh, you have to deliver on it. Uh, we will be supportive and try to help you with any issue, but uh, well, you have to deliver. So actually, the point of this talk is not to tell you how awesome it is uh, that I work at this uh, program, that I volunteer, or how, how good this program is. I actually want all of you to uh, start copying this idea and to set up a Hack Your Future of your own. Because I think it, uh, it's one of the best ways to empower uh, people. So how can you do that? Well, you'll need a couple of ingredients. First off, a convenient location. Um, it's important that people can actually reach your, uh, your location and, and a lot of these uh, people will be in camps and they might not have a lot of uh, money or, or means of tra transportation, so it's important that you find a good location. Secondly, you'll need some laptops. They don't need to be state-of-the-art. Actually, it's better if developers don't have state-of-the-art laptops so they learn how to develop for, for all people. <laughs> uh, you'll need a program director or better yet, a team of people who are prepared to think about uh, the hard challenges that you might face to get everybody together. Um, we can help you a bit with, uh, with that. Um, you'll need mentors, and this seems like it might be difficult to find people to volunteer, especially on a Sunday, as we do, but we've actually found that there is an abundance of mentors. People are really uh, happy to help. Uh, there are people from universities, there's people from companies, there's people from, uh, well, any place you can think of. A lot of people with, with diverse backgrounds uh, like to uh, help out as well. So we have a very diverse group of mentors helping out. And students, uh, of course, this is the most important part, uh, might not be as easy as finding the mentors because you need to find people um, that have basic English skills first. That's like, that's our minimum requirement but we also want them to be very motivated. So we actually have them do a little test before they're allowed to join our program. Uh, and it's about learning a skill on your own. So they have to prove that they can do that within a certain amount of time. And it's a task that really anybody can uh, complete as long as they're motivated. Um, I guess a lot of people will ask, well, how do you get financial support? You don't need that much money. It's nice if some companies help out and donate old laptops. It's nice if the municipality uh, helps out with the rent a bit or gets you a location. Um, but ultimately, this is definitely something that you can uh, overcome. You'd be surprised at how many people want to help if you have a good idea. Uh, of course, you also need a curriculum. This is something that can be very difficult to set up, but we've already done it for you. Uh, so I'll show you a link on uh, our curriculum. It's just something on GitHub. It's just a, a list of topics that we think is good to talk about, but of course you can set up your own way of doing it. Um, so how would you do this? Well, just like JSConf, you can just say like, well, I think this is a great idea. I, I want to do this in my city. So I'm just going to basically fork the, the project, uh, which you can do uh, from GitHub Hack Your Future. And then if you want to know how to get started, you can just go to uh, Start a Code School. And there will be lots of tips there, there will be lots of documents, there will be like a setup for a code of conduct, there will be a, an article about how to deal with students who have um, some trouble uh, with uh, staying in the country, there will be um, some tips on how to conduct yourself as a, as a teacher, so we've tried to share all of the knowledge that we already have here, and we also have links to all of the, the resources that we, uh, that we use. Um, if you need some more help, you can also talk to me on Slack. Actually, I think there should be a space between Lawrence and Arnauze, which is a very Dutch name. Um, but if you, if you put that in, you should be able to find me, or you can just find me in real life. I'll be around for these two days. Uh, and I hope to work together with you into uh, creating a better future.
Thank you.